world's mightiest naval vessel, the 59,000-ton supercarrier Forest Hall, is ready at her Newport News, Virginia dock for a five-day shakedown cruise prior to going into commission. 40,000 people could stand on her enormous flight deck. A Navy Yard civilian crew mans the huge ship under the command of Captain E.D. Edwards. Left, shown with Captain Johnson, naval observer, during the tests. More than three years of building, the thousand-foot vessel is ready for sea. Unfortunately, after two days of tests, two main propeller thrust bearings burn out, and the Forrestal, reduced from her 40-knot speed, returns to port at six knots for further adjustments. The end of a bloody reign of terror comes with the surrender of an entire tribe of Berbers in Morocco. After weeks of unceasing massacres, the leaders, accompanied by their warriors, women and children, come down from the hills to capitulate to General Franchi, whose armored columns have surrounded their villages. The fierce fighters had waged a war of no quarter that has kept North Africa in turmoil for six months. The Kaid offers to produce the ringleaders of the rebellion within eight days or forfeit his own life. Twelve sacrificial bulls are brought by the tribesmen whose bloodletting symbolizes their surrender. With the laying down of arms, peace for the moment comes to Morocco. Boston hails the National Convention of the Veterans of Foreign Wars and Audie Murphy, honored as the hero of the VFW conclave, coinciding with the New England premiere of the film recreating his exploits as America's most decorated combat soldier of World War II to Helen Back. Half a million witnessed the VFW parade and premiere and hailed the man of the day. The occasion saw several citations and honors conferred on the war hero and movie star, including the creation of an Audie Murphy platoon, honoring a soldier who went to hell and back for his country.